Hi, my name's Teresa Miller, and I'm a principal technologist with Cohesity. And I'm Doug Coe. I'm responsible for part of marketing of our cloud products and services here at Cohesity. So today, we're going to talk to you about accelerating your migration to cloud. This is probably something you've already experienced over the past couple of years with the, you know, really the advent of remote work and you know, data centers having limited access. It's really a, a big priority for companies to move to the cloud more quickly. That said, you know, it's not so easy just to take all your data and just move it all there up in the cloud, is it, Teresa? Not at all. Mm. In fact, that comes with a lot of challenges that you are probably, if you've started this process, starting to feel. So I think the first one I want to call out is that it, it's typically pretty time consuming to get to the cloud if you take the time to do it correctly. It's not something like you said, where you just kind of decide today and move it quickly and get it over there tomorrow. Um, the other thing is that there's a lot of really great native options, and by way of some of the more common cloud options, AWS, Azure, GCP, you're probably starting to dive in and look, and you're, you're noticing that that migration process is different for AWS than it is for Azure. But break it down further, your process for migrating a virtual machine versus, say, a web app, versus say a database or even your files and objects, totally different. And one of the nice things is that there are a lot of PowerShell scripts out there, but right. there is scripting involved. That's a script still. Yeah. People are sharing that information, but it's written for their environment, so you still have some work to do in terms of realigning those for your environment. So it creates a lot of inefficiencies for getting to the cloud easily mm -hmm. and correctly so that you're minimizing downtime for your environment. So what a lot of architects are finding is that third party is often required to get to the cloud in a more efficient way. So we have an option, at, you know, we actually have multiple options at right. Cohesity. You want to talk about those a little bit, Doug? Sure, yeah, thanks, Teresa. Yeah, here at Cohesity, we have multiple options for customers to move different data sets to the cloud. One of the great things about us or in Cohesity is we have the Cohesity Helios platform, which basically runs all our, our services and all our products. So it gives you a single platform to manage your data and a single UI to run all these different services. So there's no complexity of having different tools on board. So let's look at the first one. Uh, cloud Archive basically works with our backup product and allows you to move your backup data to the cloud based on retention policies. And you can move it into, you know, say your S3 storage buckets or your, your Azure blob uh, buckets as well too. Makes it super easy. And if you do need to get access to that data, you just restore that into a cloud instance. Another option we have is what we call Cloud Archive Direct. And Cloud Archive Direct basically works with your NAS device, your Windows uh, filers, and shares to move basically your file data to cloud storage as well too. So what's cool about this one is it actually takes the files in the original format and puts it into the cloud storage. So you can access it directly with your applications that are in the cloud or give your users direct access in the cloud. Another option we have for customers is, hey, how can I move my workloads or my production uh, systems or applications. And that's really, you know, a lot of those are running on, on their virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And with that, we have CloudSpin, which is our product that allows you to take, say, your VMware or your Hyper-V VMs, mm -hmm. and it moves those to the cloud too, and actually converts them to the native formats that are running on AWS or Azure, for example. Yeah. Um, and the last option I want to talk about is Site Continuity, which is one of our newer products that actually is a design to provide disaster recovery and disaster recovery as a service to the cloud. So this really allows you to take a more complex environment with multiple applications, multiple VMs or databases as well too, and really schedule that, uh, design a workflow, a run book, and move that to the cloud for the use of disaster recovery or a failover. And you know, one of the advantages of that is you know, if you already moved it to the cloud for a failover scenario, you can just leave it running there and complete a migration that way as well too. So really with Cohesity, we've got multiple options. Um, maybe you could talk about some of the benefits the customers might see as well. Yeah, absolutely. So 
By way of benefits, one of the really um, important ones is scheduling. So everything that Doug just described doesn't just happen on its own and and it doesn't happen because someone's sitting there at midnight watching it. You get to put in a schedule and that ties to the policies. So between the scheduling and the policies where you can control how often something is, is being prepared for the cloud, you have a lot of control. Let me take that a step further. So if we were to talk a little bit more about cloud spin, by way of policy and scheduling, I could set that and schedule it to run every 30 minutes leading up to my migration mm. window. And that's gonna prep that machine, make sure that everything that I want data-wise is in the cloud right up until that moment that I'm gonna do that scheduled cutover and do, you know, endure a little bit of a downtime, but at least I have all my data when all is said and done. Which also ties into, I think, a key point, and that's the third one, is automation. So at the end of the day, you may feel inclined to sit there and, and watch this happen, but I don't know about you. I don't want to be up at midnight getting this, this work done. So you can schedule and automate everything that we just talked about. The other really big benefit is migration and phases then. So you can pre-plan this out, impact only the applications you want to and the machines that you want to, and have a lot of control, which in the long term even benefits the bottom line because downtime equals dollars lost. So you want to make sure you migrate in phases, minimize that downtime to get the, the most um, benefit and efficient migration in the end. So just to wrap things up, by way of the options that we offer at Cohesity, regardless of the data type you have, no matter where you want to move it, we do have a tool or an option that will get you there efficiently.